Although its gameplay can be divisive, and its canonicity can be called into question, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity offered some really unique twists to Breath of the Wild while managing to stay pretty true to the original game it was based off of. Turning an action-adventure game into a button-mashing hack-and-slash couldn't have been easy, but there are some elements introduced in Age of Calamity that I think will make Tears of the Kingdom an even better game if they choose to incorporate them. So without further ado, here are three ways in which Age of Calamity can make Tears of the Kingdom a better game. First things first, let's talk weapon durability. Love it or hate it, you can't deny it's a central and core mechanic to Breath of the Wild that I don't think will be going away anytime soon. I know a lot of people find this mechanic to be annoying, and I think that's in part due to how the game relays information to the player. For instance, when a weapon gets damaged in Breath of the Wild, the only indication to the player is a string of text that states, your weapon is badly damaged, and then it starts to glow red. The problem with this is, once you reach that point, you might as well just throw the weapon away because you've got no idea how many hits you have left. Rather than risking it breaking during an important fight, it's sometimes easier just to get rid of it now and find something better to replace it with, even if you do lose out on a bit of bonus damage when it breaks. But before we get into how Age of Calamity can help us solve this problem, could you do me a favor and consider subscribing? I'm trying to reach 100,000 subscribers before Tears of the Kingdom releases. I plan to cover that game extensively when it comes out, so I'd appreciate the help and support. Thanks! So then, how could something from Age of Calamity help us here? Well, the answer is simple the blacksmith. In Age of Calamity, the blacksmith can be used to fuse weapons together or add different secondary bonuses to the weapon itself. This would allow us to build off of the system that's already in Breath of the Wild, and I think it might even encourage players to collect and try out even more weapons. It would work something like this. Let's say you find a weapon you like, you could then take it over to the blacksmith, and by using a combination of rupees, materials, ores, and even other weapons, you can modify or buff the weapon. You could give it stats to increase its damage, maybe have a higher attack speed, add elemental modifiers to it, or even increase its durability. Some of these modifications could be done with just rupees, just materials you've collected, but some, like the ones to add bonus effects to your weapons, would require donor weapons which already have those buffs. This would encourage exploration and the collection of other weapon types just to find a buff that suits your playstyle. Now there would have to be some limits put in place. I don't think allowing players to outright repair a weapon or buff its durability to the point where it will never break is a good idea, but I think this system is a nice middle ground that still keeps all the core mechanics and design ideas of Breath of the Wild intact while also still allowing players a way to at the very least, delay the inevitability of weapons breaking. Now, in addition to the blacksmith being added, and yes, I know this is something that isn't actually in Age of Calamity, but I think Nintendo should also add a durability meter. I know Breath of the Wild likes to keep things somewhat minimal when it comes to UI elements, but I think adding a small bar meter or something in the menu screen to visually show how much durability a weapon has left would go a long way and help players better manage their weapon usage while they play. It might not be totally necessary, especially with my proposed blacksmith Editions, but I still think it's something a lot of players would find extremely helpful. Next up, combat. And I know, that might sound ridiculous considering the type of game Age of Calamity is. Don't get me wrong, I understand the button mash nature of that game would not translate to something like Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom without some major tweaking. That's not what I'm going to propose anyways. I think Breath of the Wild already has a pretty decent foundation for its combat system, but as with anything, there's always room for growth and improvement. One simple way to improve the combat would be the introduction of a combo-like system. In Age of Calamity, you basically have two forms of attacks a lighter, faster attack, and a heavy attack that's a bit slower. The game then combines these two attacks via button presses to essentially allow you to create different combination and attack moves that you can pull off. Now on its own, putting this mechanic into Tears of the Kingdom would be cool, and I think having different combos for each weapon type, or even specific weapons, would go a long way in making combat more interesting and varied from player to player. But I also understand doing that wouldn't really work. So I got to thinking. How could we add a little more depth to Breath of the Wild's core combat while still having it play like a normal Zelda game? Then it hit me, Nintendo already did this in Twilight Princess! In Twilight Princess, you meet with the Hero Shade, the spirit of the Hero of Time from Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. He actually teaches Link a bunch of different moves throughout the game. Some of these are staples to the series like the Spin Attack, and others act more like combos that you can do to enemies while engaged in traditional combat. So to me, it seems natural to want to marry these two mechanics together. Perhaps throughout the game, or maybe just from the get-go, Link could have access to certain situational button combos that, when executed, would allow him to do things like the finishing blow, or allowing him to instantly get behind an enemy and strike them from the back for more critical damage. 
damage, and then maybe we can even allow him to have both a heavy attack and a light attack in his base combat kit. Like I said, Breath of the Wild already has a pretty decent base for combat and so much potential. I mean, there are already people making Breath of the Wild combat montages as it is. Now imagine if we gave those same players access to just a few more tools which would give them the ability to really dial in a combat style that suits them best. It could be something that aims to be flashy and over the top, or perhaps it could go the other direction where it's stealthy and covert. I don't think it needs combat on par with things like Elden Ring or other FromSoft titles, but I think having more options and how you fight the enemies in Tears of the Kingdom would not only mesh well with the core ideas set up in Breath of the Wild, but also give players more reason to try out other weapons and other styles of gameplay. Lastly, I'd like to see more of the side characters. Breath of the Wild introduced us to the descendants of the champions. We got Teba, Sidon, Yanobo, and Riju. We got to interact with them and learn a lot about these characters through both Breath of the Wild and Age of Calamity. It seems like it would be a giant waste to do all this setup and character development and then not actually do anything important with them. I highly doubt out, Nintendo will go as far as to let us play as any of these characters in the main game. Link is always going to be the player character, and I'm not even sure how Nintendo would be able to keep the open air nature of the game while simultaneously introducing multiple playable characters. It seems like these two ideas just clash with each other too much to be possible. However, I would like to see them play a larger role in the game. How, you might ask? Well, to be honest, I'm not too sure. Perhaps some sort of companion system could work. Let's assume each champion will have its own unique dungeon. Right now, we really don't know much about the game, but for the sake of this example, let's say Teba has been captured, and the only way to free him is by going to a new dungeon in the sky over Rito Village or something like that. Perhaps then halfway through the dungeon, you find Teba, and he then follows you through the rest of the dungeon. Occasionally, you can swap to his character or use his ability to fly to reach different sections of the dungeon and solve puzzles. This would actually work pretty similar to how Wind Waker did its companion dungeons with Makar and Medley. At the end of the dungeon, maybe Taba could help Link out by providing air support and shooting arrows from the sky at the boss. Maybe you could perhaps direct him and use him as a distraction so Link could get in close and deliver the final blows. That's just one idea and example, but even doing that I think would go a long way in help giving all the side characters more of a presence in Tears of the Kingdom. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I actually think Breath of the Wild did a really good job at introducing a ton of new and likable characters. I love all the champions. Even their descendants are pretty cool. Impa, Paya, Robbie, and Pura, even though they played a pretty minor role in Breath of the Wild, they still left an impact and I wanted to know more about them. Age of Calamity took them a step further and gave everybody, but Paya, some development. Heck, they even gave Master Koga and Suga a decent backstory. All I'm really trying to say, I guess, is that I hope these characters come back. I mean, I doubt the original champions will return since, well, you know, they're kind of dead. But the characters that are still alive, I hope Nintendo doesn't just forget about them and they actually have a more meaningful presence in the story and Tears of the Kingdom. Now this is the part where I pass the question off to you. What are some things you think should make their way into Tears of the Kingdom? And this could be anything from Age of Calamity or other past Zelda titles. I'd love to hear your ideas. That being said, if you enjoyed this video, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to see more, there's going to be a video on screen now, or you can hit that subscribe button. Anyways, my name is Matt. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.